Exploring Positive Thoughts, The Nature of Souls and Reincarnation In today's journey into positive thoughts, let's embark on the profound exploration of souls and the intriguing concept of reincarnation. What exactly are souls, and is there a possibility that they gracefully weave their essence through the tapestry of multiple lifetimes? Embracing a positive perspective, we delve into the notion that all souls share a divine and unifying essence. Beyond the distinctions of gender or earthly forms, souls are integral components of the vast cosmic soul, seamlessly interconnected in the grand tapestry of existence. As we ponder the nature of souls, let's consider the uplifting idea that they are not confined by singular lifetimes. The possibility of reincarnation dances in the realm of positive contemplation. Could it be that souls embark on a cyclical journey, gracefully navigating through different incarnations, each contributing to their spiritual evolution? In this optimistic exploration, let's envision souls as eternal travelers, gaining wisdom and accumulating experiences throughout their cosmic voyage. The very essence of reincarnation opens doors to growth, resilience, and the continuous refinement of the soul's luminous energy. As we ponder these positive thoughts, Let's embrace the idea that every incarnation is a unique opportunity for souls to learn, love, and contribute to the collective wisdom of the universe. The prospect of reincarnation becomes a beautiful tapestry woven with threads of hope, resilience, and the perpetual pursuit of higher spiritual understanding. So, in today's positive thoughts, let us pose the question with a sense of wonder, what are souls? and could they indeed be the eternal travelers gracefully embracing the cycle of reincarnation, enriching the cosmic symphony with their ever-evolving melodies of love and wisdom. Incarnation of the Soul In this chapter, today we reveal how souls incarnate into physical bodies. All souls share the same essential nature. They are neither men nor women. Like ah, such differentiating characteristics exist only in the body. All souls are part of the one soul of the cosmos. God has two servants who take care of souls. The guardian of souls cares for disembodied souls, and the conductor of souls sends them to physical incarnation. Nature creates the individual body in which the soul incarnates. The power that Hermes calls memory ensures that this body conforms to the universal form of the human species. The power that Hermes calls ability ensures that each individual body is a suitable home for the particular soul it houses. Our individual characteristics are governed by the qualities of the gods who preside over the moment of our incarnation. If the gods present at our birth are peaceful, we will be peaceful by nature. If they are bellicose, we will be aggressive. That is why astrologers say, for example, that those born in the time of Aries have certain characteristics while those born in the time of Capricorn have a different nature. Those gods who accompany the soul at the moment of birth affect the instinctive nature of the soul. Those that have their effects later in adolescence affect the rational part of the soul, before incarnating. The soul is already enveloped in a spiritual body. When this envelope is fine and clear, the soul is intelligent. However, when this envelope is dense and, uh, opaque, the soul has limited vision and is only aware of its immediate situation. When a soul sinks into incarnation, it forgets its own nature and acquires the qualities of the gods who have enclosed it in a human body. Hermes describes a vision of disembodied souls about to embark on their journey into physical form. They are filled with fear and horror at the fate that awaits them. They cannot bear the prospect of such imprisonment. Incarnation of the soul All souls are part of a single soul, which is the soul of the cosmos. All souls have a nature. They are neither men nor women. These sex differences arise only in the body. In the world above, there are two gods who are servants of the goodness of the atom, called guardians of souls and conductors of souls. The guardian is in charge of the disembodied souls. The conductor sends these souls, from time to time, to physical incarnation. Nature works alongside these gods, creating mortal vessels into which souls are poured. Nature also has two assistants, called memory and ability. Memory ensures that nature creates individual forms that are copies of the primary universal forms. 
The ability ensures that the individual structure is shaped in accordance with the soul that will incarnate it. Ensure that lively souls have living bodies. Lazy souls have lazy bodies, powerful souls have powerful bodies. The soul, which is spiritual, has its own sheaths, which are also spiritual. These are coats made of air. When these layers are thin and transparent, the soul is intelligent. When they are dense and cloudy, like the air in stormy weather, the soul cannot see far, but is only aware of its immediate situation. The differences in character of the pharaohs are not determined by the nature of their soul. Because all real souls are divine, but by the gods who escort the soul to incarnation. Souls of such quality, who incarnate for such a high purpose, do not descend without assistance. Because divine justice knows how to assign to each person what belongs to them. Even when he was exiled from the happy land. When the soul is accompanied by warrior gods, the pharaoh will wage war. When the gods are at peace, he will keep the peace. When they are musical, he will make music. When they are righteous, he will rule wisely. When they are lovers of truth, he will be a philosopher. Because souls, by necessity, cling to the temperament of the gods who bring them down to earth. Because when they sink into the human condition, they forget their own nature and are only aware of the disposition of those who have closed them off. In this mortal grave, the forces that accompany the soul do not arrive together. Some enter with the soul at birth and act on the irrational parts of the soul. The purest forces reach adolescence and cooperate with the rational parts of the soul. I have seen a vision of souls about to be encased in bodies. Some of them moaned and groaned. Some fought their fate as noble beasts, captured by cunning hunters, dragged away from their wild home. One cried out and looking up and down, exclaimed, O oh heaven, source of being bright shining stars, and inexhaustible sun and moon, light and life. Breath of one, all of you who share our home. How cruel it is to have such heavenly splendor, taken from us. We will be expelled from this holy atmosphere and this blissful life. We live here to be imprisoned in a mean and pitiful place. What harsh needs await us? What hateful thing will we have to do to satisfy the needs of a body that will soon perish? Our eyes will see little just through the liquid these orbs contain. And when we see our vast heavenly home reduced to a size as small as an eye, our pain will never cease. We will not even see clearly, because we have been condemned to darkness. And when we hear our brothers and sisters blow with the wind, we will regret that we no longer breathe in unison with them. Join the cosmic conversation. Share your thoughts on the profound journey of souls in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay connected with the mysteries of the universe.